Okay, so today, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be working on the crone. Uh, it has been raining excessively here for the last three days. Uh, you can see this right here. The water, the slop, the fun, the lovely, lovely fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the tractor and the baler, I'm gonna let it warm up here for a few minutes. And while I'm talking about warming up, we're gonna talk about jumper hoses. Now, Travis from the rest of the story, uh, which is uh, Ryan from How Farms Works, brother, if you didn't know that, you can go check out the rest of the story. Uh, probably most of you know who he is. Uh, don't be a lurker, be a subscriber, and hit the subscribe button to his channel because Travis does a really good job. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, jumper hoses. I, I read some of the comments. I was actually contacted by uh, two people saying, is this for real or is that a load of bullshit? Well, it is for real. Um, I will tell you that that jumper hose deal came about in, I believe, the end of the 10 series John Deere, like the 4010, 40, 30, 10, 40, 10, 50, 10, uh, and... Uh, definitely in the 4020 because the 4020 was the first year that John Deere offered the power shift transmission. Power shift transmissions do not like cold weather. They are jerky jumpy to begin with but when you add that element of cold oil which changes the consistency of the oil you have two options. You can start your tractor up and wait for it to warm up for quite some time, or you can uh, change, well, you have three options. You can start it up, let it warm up, go, you know, clean your barn out, feed your cows, do whatever you had to do back in the day, uh, or you could change the viscosity of the hydraulic oil down to a 10 weight from a 30 weight. I believe it's 30 weight. Uh, I believe that's what hydraulic oil is. I can't remember now uh, because they don't really offer too many different options with hydraulic oil. I know John Deere only uh, offers High Guard, which is what I use in my IVT transmissions. Now, IVT transmissions, they're finicky. Uh, it's best to let them warm up. Uh, they will run on cold oil just fine. I have not gotten into a situation where it's been too cold that the tractor does not want to run but it does need to be up to temperature in order for that transmission to calibrate. And the John Deere transmissions uh, in the 30 series, that's what I'm uh, accustomed to. I don't have anything newer than the, the 30 series, uh, the 80, 75, 30, 85, 30. That needs to be up to temperature before it will calibrate. So when it's cold, it goes, uh, it goes just fine. The, uh, but when it, came to that jumper hose, which, you know, he's caught some flack, I'd say, maybe a little bit. I, I know all about it because I've used them for years. Um, John Deere has a section in the, uh, in the 30 series, uh, and even in the 20 series, I had a 4020, and there, they had a jumper hose uh, set up for the, um, for the uh, 20 series. Now in these tractors, they tell you to set them to continuous. Continuous and then hit the button. And that will actually, that will, what the hell did I do? There it is. They want you to set the uh, your uh, selector control valve to continuous and then you can run it on continuous, which will heat up your oil. So there is a, uh, open center or closed center, whatever the hell it is. Anyways, you don't need the jumper hose on this particular model. Uh, but uh, I know that for a fact because I changed the oil in this transmission and I read through the book and it told me, uh, you don't need the jumper hose. What you need to do is set your selector control valves to continuous, click it on, wait so many minutes and 15 to 20 minutes, or I think it was about 10 to 15 minutes, and boom, your engine oil would be up, or your transmission oil would be up to temperature where you can change your hydraulic transmission oil or, you know, even you're ready for use. So they kind of did away with the jumper hoses uh, for this particular model. And I do believe in the 7600 like Travis has, uh, the jumper hose is not necessary. If you put it into the detent, maybe, because I don't think that has a command arm. I think it's a, the 10 series. That's no, the 20 series. It starts with the 20 series where you go that route. 
but he should know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, on the, uh, the 4430 was the first that I needed to use the jumper hose when it was really cold. We're talking in the late 80s, early 90s. It was the late 80s. We had sub-zero weather. It was like 14 degrees below zero. You start the damn tractor up, you go to put it into gear and it wouldn't or it wouldn't shift. It was a quad range transmission. So that was the first that I really used the jumper hoses was in the quad range transmissions. My dad used to start the tractor up and milk cows and then and then was able to take a manure out with the 4430 when it was that cold, but I wasn't that patient or knowledgeable at the time where I would just start the damn thing up and it was like, God, this thing is jamming. Why is it doing that? I went to the operator's manual and lo and behold, there it is, jumper hose. Put that in, plug it in, and there is also a John Deere hydraulic oil cleanup kit that you can purchase, which is really simple. Just go get yourself uh, a hydraulic, uh, you know, a, a auxiliary hydraulic filter gizmo, and then you can run your hoses between that and get yourself like a five micron filter. You can go as low as a two micron, but I wouldn't suggest anything more than a five micron because it'll fill up pretty quickly. Um, as you know, the dirtier a filter gets, the cleaner it is. The less mic, the smaller the holes are because it just starts to load up, and that's when a plugged filter happens. You get cleaner fuel from a plug filter than you will from a brand new one. Uh, higher fuel flow means a clean filter, and you know higher fuel flow or hydraulic flow. So, if you, I remember putting the oil cleanup filter on the 4430 back when I was in high school and running that damn thing and it would get hot because it was it, oil is getting forced through a small filter and it is it is heating up the oil which would in turn heat up the transmission in about 10 minutes boom off you go and it was fucking cold that winter i mean really cold so jumper hoses in tractors is nothing new it is nothing new at all it's not cold outside here today right now i'm saying it's somewhere around 40 degrees uh, it's it is what it is. We've had rainy weather, um, and now everything is just completely mud. I can't do a damn thing. So what I'm going to do is actually just get a hold of this baler, take it up and down the road, see if I can smell the burning smell. If that is the case, I'm going to chase down which axle it is that is dragging a brake drum, and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, and I'll join you. Or you can join me in the shop when we figure this mess out. Because I don't need a baler burner. Okay, so we've pinpointed that it is the drums. We've got the we've got the baler cleaned off of all loose debris and stuff. Um, they're not hot. They weren't really hot. So I think what has happened is dust and dirt has gotten in behind there, and it's actually burning it out uh, as ash. Now that, that can be a problem. Uh, the boys are working on the Jeep in the shop, so I'm just going to put this thing away, and then we will attack this later. Not today, not tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Definitely not today, but uh, I'm just going to pop it all off of there. I think those drums come off fairly easily. If not, I really don't feel like pulling these spindles completely off, but that could very well be what I end up doing. Uh, I don't know. I got to see what, see how much time I got to deal with in there. I got the new baler in there, which I should move out of there, but I haven't had the time to do it yet. 